There are many stories of the First World War, which blur the lines between myth and reality. Perhaps the most famous of these is the tale of the Angels of Mons. The story goes that as the troops of the British Expeditionary Force began to withdraw from the Battle of Mons on the 24th of August 1914, they were saved from defeat by the intervention of angels, said by some to be the soldiers who fought at Ashenkor. Suffice it to say, there is no evidence to suggest any kind of divine intervention in the battle. Indeed, the British army only narrowly escaped from the battlefield at all. So where did the story of the angels come from? In September 1914, Welsh author Arthur Machen published a short story called The Bowmen of England in the Evening News. This is commonly viewed to be the catalyst which allowed the myth to develop. Macken described how the ghostly bowmen led by St George held back the German army and ultimately were victorious. This was a work of fiction, but it was not labelled as such and was written from the perspective of one present at Mons. He wrote it to try and comfort himself and others as reports of the retreating army reached Britain. He later stated, I know what we read and how we were sick at heart and I suppose that in the first place it was to comfort myself that I thought of the story of the bowmen and wrote it in the early days of September. And perhaps I had better go into the box for the last time and swear once more that the tale is mere and sheer invention, that I made it up out of my own head, and that to the best of my knowledge and belief, it is entirely without any foundation. Macken wrote those lines in the 1930s, even then, he was still attempting to undo the impact his story had in 1914. Back then, he was fighting even more of a losing battle, as for every statement he made declaring the bowman to be a work of fiction, there was another article from an unidentified soldier or nurse or correspondent published, maintaining that it was true. And yet, while the tale of the bowman was fictional, there is far more to the story of the angels. The British Expeditionary Force may not have been saved by supernatural beings, but there is no doubt that the strain of battle and the conditions of the subsequent retreat led to some occurrences which were difficult to understand or explain, and which may have helped to promote the myth. Quite simply, while marching for days in the summer heat, suffering from hunger, dehydration and chronic lack of sleep, the soldiers started to see things. One of the best examples of this can be found in the memoirs of Major Tom Bridges of the 4th Dragoon Guards. We found a fleet of supply wagons in the wood with engines still running and other queer things, including German soldiers in grey-green cut in half at the waist. I never knew how. Was it an illusion caused by the ground mist, or did I dream it? for I rode in a trance. Jack Campbell, of the Royal Army Medical Corps, recognised the hallucinations for what they really were, and later remembered. There were few of us who did not suffer hallucinations, imagining troops of German cavalry going past. Similarly, Private Frank Richards of the Second Royal Welsh Fusiliers recalled the toll which lack of sleep took on the mind. We retired all night with fixed bayonets, many sleeping as they were marching along. If any angels were seen on the retirement, as the newspaper accounts said they were, they were seen that night. March, march, for hour after hour with no halt. We were now breaking into the fifth day of continuous marching, with practically no sleep in between. We were carrying our rifles all shapes, and it was only by luck that many a man didn't receive a severe bayonet wound during the night. Stevens said, There's a fine castle there, see? Pointing to one side of the road. But there was nothing there. Nearly everyone was seeing things. We were all so dead beat. So, while the story of the Angels of Mons was fictitious, 
it's clear that many soldiers began to blur the lines between the real and the imaginary. Exhaustion and dehydration caused hallucinations which in many cases seem to have been extremely realistic. And even though most writing after the war recognised these apparitions for what they really were, at the time it must certainly have seemed very unnatural and unnerving. It's really unsurprising then that a story like Macken's Bowman came to be so widely believed. Even if soldiers could not swear to having seen angels, they could account for seeing many things which seemed not of this world.